Welcome to Season 3 of Sailing Sitka. I'm Kenna, and this is Jay. We live aboard our 1976 Choi Lee sailboat named Sitka, in which we have sailed south from Canada in 2022 to the very last port of Mexico. This season, we are finally exiting Mexico and taking our boat further through the Panama Canal and into the beautiful Central American waters. Alongside us for this season is our pal Nico, who is taking you along for the adventure because why the hell not? So hit that subscribe button and follow along as this season we are sailing as far and wide as possible. You guys just, you make this happen and we couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of Sailing Sitka and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for dropping in to this week's episode of Sailing Sitka. We have currently returned back to Mexico from Canada to get our sailboat ready to splash and set sail into this year's fresh cruising season. Watch as we work hard getting our boat Sitka back in ship shape here in Marina Chiapas. All right, just got off the bus. I think they charged us three times what everybody else paid, but it's still, to be honest, pretty damn cheap. It was like five bucks for the both of us for like a 50 minute ride. Yeah, Sitka's there and you see one side, we painted the bottom, the other side not. A couple things to do, I'm gonna seal that bolt that I showed you guys yesterday for the uh, divers thing. So I'm gonna look everywhere in the boat before I get dirty here, if I have some sealant. If not, I'm gonna go beg someone at the marina and then we're gonna paint the upper coat and then I'm gonna go up the main mast and wash the mast before I can even sand it because it's full of coffee grounds and then give a coat of sea towel and see the little areas that might need repair. Those areas will get some epoxy probably and then we'll cover them. Day two, baby, let's go. We're already sweating so much. Just like that, we're diving straight into it today. First up, painting the bottom paint on the starboard side of Sitka. On a good note, I found some 52, an already open tube of 5200 on the boat from last year when we installed our new through hull. So that's perfect because that's exactly what I, that's the best thing I need for that bolt because it's something that should never come out. So we'll rebed that with that. We should be all good. Things are working out. So yesterday we thought this paint was shitty, but. Well, it's, it's just cause it was hot and the hall was hot from all day in the sun. Yeah, it's applying way, way, way better this morning. That being said, we only have enough to do like one thick coat everywhere. Yeah. But to be fair, we still have at least, in some places, like two layers of black paint and then the green paint was also from last year. We did one green, two black last mm -hmm. year. And it was only in the water for six months. So. And we told him how much the paint was to the people? Yeah, 500 bucks. 500 each. So to those of you who are like, why didn't you just get more paint? Maybe if you sign up to our Patreon, <laughs> it's only sick. The thing too is like, this paint would be cheaper if you could buy it. Like if we would have been close to the States and we could have gotten it in the States or, yeah. or Canada, but because we had to order it from Puerto Vallarta and get it shipped here to the southern border of Mexico. That paint too, like though, the one thing is, it definitely has been sitting for a while. Because even with my drill, it takes like 20 minutes to stir. This is also not our first choice of paint either. That being said, this is like technically a way higher quality paint than what we no normally put on Sitka. Normally we put fiberglass and tea, which is like the cheapest paint you can get. Ablative paint. And honestly, we've always had great success with it. And it's like a quarter of this price. It's just like the best feeling. Oh, can he go the full nine yards? Yeah, because I did a one single strip. You did? Yeah. I don't remember that. Oh my gosh. Well, I did a single strip on each side, so I don't have to restart on the other side. Hell yeah. And I was like, you guys are done already? Like, you guys want to jump? <laughs> this was one of the best decisions we've ever made last year was raising this water line. Oh, yeah. Like we literally are so thankful every single time. After the bottom paint was successfully applied, we jumped back up top to start digging into this diver's dream project, only to quickly realize it wasn't going to go as smoothly as we would have liked. Jay is now trying to find that bolt that holds the diver's dream. No, I found it. Oh, you found it? No, I found it. Oh, you found it? He went into that lads first. Like a f***ing idiot. <laughs> it's in this lads. It's good, we got to grease the steering wheel at the same time. Yeah, there it is. Nice. You don't even have to empty everything. No, it's right there. So you see how this one is solid? Uh, but this one, 
that's the one I can turn. Shouldn't be able to turn like that. So what I'm gonna do is, Kenna's gonna go down and hold it. And I'm gonna unscrew that, clean it up. Fucking grab this up, fucking stupid thing. Good thing we, cha we changed the diver's dream. And good thing that I was like, cause I, at one point I was like, oh, you know what? Like, I guess we'll change That's it next great. season at the airport. Cause it, like, they wouldn't let us go through in Guadalajara. And then I was like, you know what? Like, no, like we paid good money and we transported through four airport. Like I'm gonna, and we had like a long layover. So I'm like, I'm gonna go try to get it on this plane. And luckily I did that. Cause if we hadn't tried to change it, we would have never realized that the seal had failed on there. That being said, like this, there was still seal, but like when I undid it, it cracked it, but it would probably not last of the season. So it's good that we're doing this so that way we're not It'd be nice to have like a dry bilge this season. Sitka's never had a dry bilge. So maybe this season is Maybe this season is the season Basically all we're doing is cleaning the hole like I already sanded it took all the sealant off And uh, went outside sanded it like you can tell it's all nice and sanded there and then we're just gonna clean it with some acetone and then Put a shift on a 5200 and we put it in place so that's the plan. I know guys, it's pretty ghetto, but... <laughs> this is how we have to do it sometimes. While we were in the process of installing the new diver's dream, the other bolt in which we originally thought was fine also turned out to be loose and started spinning when positioning the new diver's dream zinc. None of this, unfortunately, was able to be filmed quick enough, as we had to act fast before the 5200 started to set. We ended up having to unbolt the new zinc, apply more 5200 around the other bowl without completely removing the second bowl and reposition the diver's dream before the first bolt started to cure. Not every project results in the way that you would like, and sometimes you just have to make it work with what you have. All right, guys, so a little rough start today. Like that uh, zinc bracket didn't go as planned. It was a bit of a nightmare, but we got it We got it done. Hopefully she doesn't leak. We're gonna find out, I guess, when we go in the water, but I think we're good. Now, Kenna is gonna go up and she's basically cleaning all the sand grounds, not the sand, sorry, the coffee grounds off. So like, see how here is clean and then here is all brown and then clean. So she's doing that all the way up with a rag that has water and she's got a spray bottle. And then after that, once she's at the top, she's gonna sand, quickly sand, and she has another spray bottle of, uh, well, she has a can of mineral spirits and then she'll clean on her way down. And then right now we're just taking, she's taking the tape off here. Uh, yeah, if you guys remember, we had a whole woodpecker situation and um, I just reached the first hole. So to show you guys what it was like that was one of the tinier holes that we had. We haven't even gotten to the mizzen yet, which has the ginormous hole all the way through to the middle of the mass. So anyway, that's one of the holes. Yeah, thanks again, Paul, for coming and covering those. Yeah, Paul from Sister Midnight, Sister right, Midnight there. right there. He came aboard Sitka and hoist, got hoisted up and freaking filled these holes with all that shit over there anyway. It was awesome. I found some more. They're not technically holes, just little pecks, but yeah. And if you guys haven't been following, when we first left the boat in April, people messaged us and let us know that there was woodpeckers on our wooden mast and they did some crazy damage. I'll link some pictures or videos of the things that we captured or that people captured for us that we have but um anyway yeah it was horrible so we're just now finding them all out and actually able to assess them in person when we're off the hard we are going to be actually addressing them and filling them and today's gonna go up and deal with them all but right now we're just trying to um clean and sand and see all the mast found another one this one's about maybe an inch deep, not covered, but again, very hard. So not, not too much of a concern. We're just gonna be sanding them and then varnishing them. These How ones are fine. Diameter, like a or uh, a dime. Oh, smaller. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Yeah, I'll but. I'll just drill it out and put it front. Yeah, it's about a diameter of a dime, maybe a nickel. All right. Pretty much the top of the mast. It's beautiful here. It's super, super rainforesty up here. Like, I'll show you guys trying out to drop you. Just lush, lush greenery all around. And that's the boatyard. 
don't know if you can hear it, but there's like toads or birds that are like making sounds 24 seven. But yeah, this is the Marina Chavez from the top, bird's eye view. Anyway, just sanded this first portion, gonna wipe it down with mineral spirits, and then I'm gonna go down, which is my favorite part. After cleaning and sanding the entire main mast, we called it a day and headed back to our Airbnb, this time via Tuk Tuk, which is a cart welded with seats onto a front of a motorcycle. This took us to Porto Madero, which is a much easier place to grab a Colectivo bus or a taxi all the way to Tapachula. Sierra luxurious accommodations. Show them the perks. Oh yeah, uh, when you want to go to the bathroom, if it's nighttime especially, there's no light. It gets a, a little dark. The so one thing I will say that is very nice is this AC works really good. It's the only thing we really even cared about. Yeah. Yesterday we ate chicken in bed. We had like, we got like a little chicken, beans, salsa, tortillas, forks, and plates. From Walmart? From Walmart. The one thing I will say is like the location is like bomb for being in, it's far from the marina, but there's nothing close to the marina. But this is like, we're next to like Home Depot, Walmart, auto parts store, which I'll need to go get. Cause I, we told you guys that the fridge turned on, it did turn on and it's doing the same thing as last year. So I think we have like a slow leak somewhere, but it's so slow that like it doesn't really matter once you do a refill. So last year we paid someone to come do refill and he was really good and he was recommended when we're in Wymus. And it was easy and it was very affordable. But I think that as we go forward, it's gonna become harder. I don't think here it's gonna be easy to find someone that's willing to come all the way down to the boat anyways. So I looked online, it doesn't look like rocket science to do. So I'm just gonna buy some, I, I basically spent like an hour and a half yesterday doing research on that. So uh, I guess now we become fridge techs on Sitka as well. So I need to buy some refrigerant R134 and yeah, a little gauge. And, our compressor, the pressure should be between 11 and 12. The higher the pressure, you don't want to go over pressure because then it's worse. You don't want to go too low either because then your compressors, actually if you're lower in refrigerant, you're technically going to have a colder freezer, but then it's always going to be working. So we want to be, apparently the magic number for ours is 11.7. So anyways, I'm going to max this out so when we come back after a day of work, it's like blasting cold. Okay, good morning everyone. Day three in the yard and we're starting it off real quick with Jay going up the main. Yeah, I'm gonna basically do all the seat all right now without doing all the fixes to the mass. So I'm gonna seat all the areas that basically 99% of the mass is gonna get seat all and then the areas that we need to put like add wood plugs or something, we're gonna wait till we're in the water because we just don't have time. The reason why we're doing the seat all right now before we go in the water is the entire v berth right now is full of our sails and all our running rigging. And once we seat all this, even though there's repairs, they're not close to the sail and they're not really on the forward face or the aft facing part of the mast. So we'll be able to put the main up tomorrow morning, probably just before we haul in. So that'll start emptying the boat a bit because like the whole v berth's full of stuff. So we want to get rid of some stuff. We can put the Genoa out tomorrow too, once we're back in the water, start emptying the boat. And then once that's set, then we'll do an like I have a bunch of repairs at the bottom too, so. Yeah, sorry for these fast videos. Like I seem like I'm rushing all the time. It's cause I am, I need, we need to get stuff done. So uh, it won't be the best boat yard kind of like filming, but once we're in the water, like tomorrow we'll be able to film more of the projects. But right now we just got to get boogie in. Just cutting our last length cause it's super duper rusty. We just want to be safe. Yeah. And then we took all the chain down. We're gonna repaint it. All our red lines every 20 feet. Last year when we took this apart, we noticed that the main pin from Mantis was like fucked. And I, I mean, it's normal. It's not meant to, once you bend them, but they're like, I don't know, three bucks or something. But in Canada, they're like 10 bucks with shipping, <laughs> like usual. Everything's more expensive in Canada, people. Um, we've, we've kind of found that out, even though like our money's worth a lot less. And I ordered this pin at the same time, which we don't need because we still have ours, but I figured that's something that we might lose one day and then we'd be shit out of luck without a paddle. So for an extra five bucks, 
we ordered one. So now I'm just gonna put this back together. It goes like that. It goes like that. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you see there's the hole here. And that's where the pin goes? Yeah, the pin goes in here, and then it goes on this groove. Now we got the new pin in. I had to look for Teflon tape for like 20 minutes. Finally found it. And then this goes in, put a bit of lock, thread lock. I don't know why I'm reversing all my words. I think it's because we're in Spanish mode now. <laughs> that looks so good. There's different ways of doing this. Um, I just figure it, so I go like so. This one goes there. Go back through the hole. Yeah, it's just basically provide this from, it prevents that from unturning itself. I swear I can't speak right now. This heat, guys, is like no joke. All right, so we just marked the chain. I don't know if Kenna filmed it, but uh, so we mark every 20 feet. And then for the last 20 feet, I did two small marks and then the actual mark. So we know that when we see those two marks, that means once we see that next mark, there's only 20 feet left until we, it's the end of the chain. So we have 280 feet, feet of chain on here, no road, um, which is what I prefer. I prefer not having road. We have the potential of adding road to it if we wanted to. We have road in the aft lazarette and this chain is tied to the bottom of the anchor locker. So if we ever needed more, we could. But where we're going, uh, it's only gonna get shallower. So we're gonna need less and less scope. Scope is just a unit of measurement for when you anchor. So typically you want a five to one scope. What that means is, if you're in a hundred foot of water, you would want 500 feet of chain, which is crazy. You never anchor in that deep, uh, maybe in the South Pacific, but typically you're anchoring in 20, 30 feet. So for an example, if you're in 20 feet of water, you want five times that. So that'd be your scope from five to one, one being the ocean depth and then your five being the anchor chain length. So if you're in 20 feet of water, multiply 20 times five, that gives you a hundred. So you want to have a hundred feet out. That's ideal scenario. So. If you have a right size anchor oversized like a rock or mantis, you should be good for like up to like 40 knots wind at a five to one ratio, if, especially if you're all chain. But look at your boat manufacturer's weight because that plays a huge role and then your anchor type and all that stuff. Also having a swivel is really useful. I used to be against swivel because back in the days when I started sailing like 16 years ago, they, there was no swivel on the market that was good. They were all usually the weakest link of your anchor setup. So it made more sense to not have an anchor swivel. But nowadays with like Mantis and I think Rockna makes one now, I'm not too sure, but the Mantis one anyways is the one I have experience with. And that one is like no longer the weakest link. It's actually the strongest link. So that's the little tidbit from Jay today. <laughs> Hopefully it helped uh, somebody. And uh, yeah, if you guys are sailors, like let us know what your uh, your anchoring tricks and tips are. We anchor like 99.9% .9 of the time. Like we literally like in a year and a half, two years, we only we only been in Marina twice and that's because we had no choice. And that's Ensenada and here in Chiapas. We dragged once and it was in Barra. You guys can go look at that episode. Um, that was a weird one, but we were on board luckily. So no, no harm, no foul. So now we're just waiting about 10 minutes because it's so hot here, it's gonna be dry. And then we're gonna do a second coat and then we'll let that dry probably half an hour and then we'll bring it back up. And that'll be the anchor thing. The reason we have to do this on the hard is we tried to do this at the marina and they were like, no. So <laughs> They tend to say no to a lot of things. Yeah, so we were gonna do, we were literally had the whole chain laid up and like we put tarps underneath, like obviously we weren't gonna like paint over the dock, like we're not animals. But yeah, they still didn't want us to do it. So now we have to do it here because we're hauling in tomorrow. We're, going, we're splashing tomorrow. So once that's done, we're going to bring that up. And then I have some mast work to do at the bottom, at the base of the mast. And then we're going to seat all that. And then if I have time today, I might go back up and uh, put some epoxy in those holes that that stupid freaking motherfucker. Ooh. Piece of shit. Beep. Fucking beep bird did yeah i'm i used i used to like birds but i don't know about it anymore you like some birds just yeah, not woodpeckers just cause so much extra work like we'd be done like if it wasn't for the woodpecker we'd literally be done both mass right now yeah like we today like they'd be done but now it's like yeah it's a pain in the asshole and there's like three or four on the main mass that i need to put epoxy the rest are just surface scratches that i can just Seat all, but the other ones, like I just don't want w w water accumulating in them. On the linear grain on the mass, it's not actually that bad because they don't go through. Like I could technically just varnish them, but I'm gonna fill them with epoxy first. 
just to be extra safe but there's a tiny one it's a tiny one on top of the spreader but that water would sit in it so yeah. that i need to like dig and it's not deep it's literally nothing but water will sit in there and slowly rot it mm -hmm. so that one i want to definitely get so anyways that's uh that's the update and it is hot i think it's 35 celsius today but you got to add that it's 70 percent humidity today so it feels like 40 something i drink like three or four of these a day and i don't pee till like 8 p.m <laughs> It's not normal. Can you tell them where we went for dinner last night? Oh, uh, we went to like, so next to our, next to our hotel, there's like, well, hotel, I don't know if it's a hotel, but next to our accommodation, I should say, is a big mall with like a Walmart and like pretty, pretty fancy mall, actually. Uh, nicer than a lot of malls in Canada. And, uh, but in there, there's a food court, but there's also a sit down uh, Chinese restaurant and it's Chinese re restaurants in Mexico are surprisingly really good mm -hmm. and we went in there last night and for the equivalent of 21 bucks including our lemonade drinks uh, me and Kenna both ate like a really 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 good uh, meal so we might go back there tonight as a little treat after boat work so mm. and tomorrow Nick arrives at <gasps> 4 a.m. Nicky boy! Nicky boy! So oh, Nick's yeah. gonna be here and that's gonna be good. It's gonna be nice to have a bit of help. Sadly, Nick's cabin's not ready, so he's gonna be in the quarter berth for a bit. So it's gonna be kind of a shit show, but uh, he's a good sport. He's also a sailor, uh, has his own boat in Mexico, so he knows he knows how it goes. So, which is great. It's it's always nice to have crew that you know that mm -hmm. a you know and b that are sailors and boaters, so they get it. Like you know what I mean. Um, hopefully, he's a, he's has an easier time climatizing than we do. He's a California boy, so more used to the heat but it is hot here people i don't even know like my brain doesn't function right here no you don't talk like, even straight you I, don't I, talk I, even straight i don't i can't even speak straight like you were so out of it okay those of you who are wondering who nick is you probably saw in one of our episodes on the cruise he brought us over focaccia bread chocolate chip focaccia bread when we were departing at 2 30 a.m so yeah he's he's a really really good guy beauty legend we're happy to yeah. have him as canadians would say he's a he's a beautician it's the top level of beauties all right without that being said what? we're gonna do the second coat of paint here i don't think that made sense without being without that being with said. that being said with that be without that being said <laughs> so I'm, i can't speak anymore okay we gotta paint <laughs> all right so kenna right now is at the top of the mizzen mass trying to play pinata with a bird's nest, an old one, and it seems like uh, they're good builders because she's been at it for like 10 minutes now and it's still it's getting better, but it's still pretty much there. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn, boy. Good job. Now pull the rest towards you. Look at this little nest. That's a good nest. Okay, they weren't fucking around when they built that shit. Okay, we just finished our day. And now this is what we do at the end of every day in the boatyard. We wait on the side of a road. It's like 40 Celsius right now. In the heat. And we wait for either A, a collectivo, B, or a tuk-tuk, C, we hitchhike, which has happened. So Yeah, we had to hitchhike the first day. I think that's one. Anyway, we gotta focus. <laughs> Thank you for watching this week's episode of Sailing Sitka. Stay tuned next week as we splash our sailboat and get her one step closer to sailing further south and to new destinations. Until next time. Thank you for watching this week's episode of Sailing Sitka. Stick around for more to come. If you enjoyed, please spread the love and let us know. Special thank you to our Patreon members for making these videos possible, as well as helping our dreams come true. See you all next week.